uh, in uh, collision assessment or conjunction assessment is to have precise orbit. Right now, what we see that uh, operators of small satellites are launching their own satellites somehow and relying on the outer data source on orbit of their own satellite. So normally, they do not uh, bother, uh, they do not <coughs> uh, put something uh, uh, to, to know uh, the orbit more precisely. So the first recommendation is to think about implementation of onboard GNSS techniques. Next, uh, we have to think about design modifications to improve traceability of, a spa of small spacecraft in course and after the end of the mission. It's very important because in case of emergency or in case satellite is becoming non-operational, ground monitoring space surveillance systems and sensors have to be capable to track your satellites. And here at the picture you, you see famous MEMS, PicoSat launched in 2000. It was very tiny, really tiny, seven centimeter size uh, objects. Uh, connected with the Tejer, and in order that this couple would be tra traceable by ground stations, the Tejer has contains thin strands of gold wire. Then, second recommendation is implement standard formats for orbital information <coughs> representation. I will not uh, uh, um, uh, speak in details about this. Uh, the recommendation is just to uh, download the standard, CCSDS standard, and to look at it. And I recommend to read carefully section five, orbit ephemeris message. Uh, and uh, that, from my point of view, it can be considered or recommended as the most universal format for the purposes of sharing orbital information. Then, as soon as you have precise orbital information. We uh, recommend to share it with other operators. And then you have to perform conjunction assessment in an appropriate way. When, when we were preparing space debris mitigation guidelines, you remember there was guideline three about the conjunction assessment. But at that time, we made one mistake. We told that operators have to use any available orbital information to perform conjunction assessment. That was their mistake. Now we're trying to, to correct this mistake in new guidelines we prepare. And that guidelines will, will contain uh, the description of steps uh, have to be done in order the conjunction assessment would be reliable or results of that assessment would be reliable. So do not use, please do not use any orbital information you can find in the internet uh, for conjunction assessment and do not use TLE data it, because it's uh, written on the space track website that you shouldn't use TLE data for conjunction assessment. And as soon as you uh, obtain the, the results, you have to share them and then uh, uh, you have to consider appropriate coordination with other spacecraft operators via designated points of contacts. And as for the minimi mi minimizing orbital lifetime of spacecraft after the mission termination, uh, please consider following, again, practical recommendations. First, at the design stage, you think, uh, you have to, to think carefully, uh, re do you really need to place your satellite very high. For spacecraft having ballistic coefficient of order one uh, hundredths of square meter per kilogram, the upper limit uh, for which 25 year criteria is satisfied as a median is 650 kilometers, not higher. If you, if you really need to put your satellite higher, then you have to think about additional means on what you will do at the end of the mission in order to satisfy this criteria. And there is ISO standard on how to estimate or 
orbit lifetime. So I recommend you all to look at this standard. And this is a picture which demonstrates how long satellite will uh, stay on orbit if it will be put at different altitude of circular orbit having uh, the same uh, ballistic coefficient. And you see if you put uh, your satellite and uh, uh, 1,300 kilometers circular orbit, it will stay there for 10,000 years, not 25. Uh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> the difference or importance of the ballistic coefficient, uh, or correct uh, <coughs> uh, ballistic coefficient uh, um, assessment, is demonstrated here. You rem uh, I'm, as I mentioned, in 2000. Uh, there was a launch of a, a lot of small satellites, and along with them was uh, launched a sphere, a uh, so-called um, optical calibration sphere, and pretty large. And you see that small satellite I mentioned earlier is still on orbit at the same altitude. It dropped just a few dozen kilometers, and sphere already decayed. And uh, I think the, in the next talk, uh, the, 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 uh, the next speaker uh, will tell us about different means on how to use natural forces uh, to uh, lower your satellite, but uh, some obvious options are here, and uh, example of that small satellite uh, can apply engines, is a SNAP-1 designed by SSTL and successfully operated on orbit, just four six kilogram satellites with the engine and it performs successful operations. And uh, <clears throat> here the, the trade off between different uh, uh, technical means which uh, could, could be uh, useful uh, for satellites. And the final slide, I would hi highly recommend to read these three books if you don't uh, read it yet. The first one is not just about satellites, it's, it, it's about mission design, and it covers each and every aspect, including debris, including radio frequency, including uh, orbit uh, design, and everything. So this is the excellent book uh, and to read. And the first two uh, uh, for the, are for those who would like to learn more in astrodynamics and to perform more precise calculations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vladimir. And I hope you were reading carefully and listening carefully all the slides to follow the important messages related to the orbits and the orbit. Yeah. You would like to announce something important? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we will have a question only on the summary, but a quick question, Mike. Yes. It's a quick question. Are you aware of the Space Data Association? And if you have any comments around the effectiveness of that type of sharing platform for satellite position information? Uh, Yes, uh, I, I'm aware about the uh, Space Data Association, and I, I think that this is a good example how satellite operators could interact. But uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, this is just one step, and uh, it doesn't solve all, all problems. So, but this is a very good example of cooperation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Manfred. Uh, Witting, Manfred uh, is also from the Technical University of Berlin, yes. like Martin, it seems Technical University Berlin is also a strong space-related university. I'm sorry to say to that Manfred, after university, he got very sick. Yes. He got infected with the space <laughs> virus. And based on this, he joined ESA and worked 
After university from 87 up to 2011, the ESA telecommunication director at the project manager for broadband KA systems, uh, processing of signal processing, intersatellite links, etc., etc. And after retiring young man, he founded his company and now he's working in aerospace. He's supporting Galileo and other subcontractors. Manfred, microphone is yours. Good morning. So I'm going to give you lots of geographs. So I go quick by each single geograph, but I will give you the message and you will get the presentations. So the details you can read, but I guide you through and then you, when you are interested, you can read it later on the details. So let's start debris. Debris definition, very simple. Everything which is not used or functioning, it's debris. And here we have uh, a list, spent satellites, so old satellites, satellites out of use, launch upper stage, which is quite a large amount, launch and mission related objects, so not only rocket stages, but pieces which fall off. Then NAK droplets come to that later, paint, ejector from satellites, and solid rocket motor ejector and dust, and then the natural stuff, meteorites. So that is uh, what is debris about. And in this graph, you see the number of objects in space, starting in, yeah, when space age began, until this year, or last year, let's say. And here it's a total accumulated number, and you see jumps, and that was the destruction of a satellite, that was a collision of the iridium and the cosmos, and it's always a step function when a collision occurs. The next graph is the same, but it's in, no, oh, sorry, that one. Uh, it, it was the previous, was the same. Uh, it's in, in kilograms, mass in orbit, the same story. And that is the number of launches which occurred. So you see it went up, went a little bit down, but it's going up. So the number of objects in space are increasing. And now a little bit of basics, why debris is an issue. Uh, the kinetic energy of an object in space, simple equation, and for one kilogram, a CubeSat type, has a um, kinetic energy of about 25 megajoules. It, it tells you nothing, but it is equivalent to about six kilograms of TNT, of high explosive stuff. So it's just the speed of one object, but if they come together si uh, against each other, it's four times of that, because the speed goes with the square. So it's uh, 100 megajoules or 25 kilograms of TNT. So keep that in mind. It ranges between zero if they don't collide and something quite important. Uh, one bird where there is a problem is Envisat was launched in 2002. It's a big satellite, went out of operation suddenly in 2012, no control at all, and it needs to be brought down and it's about equivalent of around 50 tons of TNT. Uh, Hubble, similar story. So the shuttle isn't there to bring him back. That was one of the ideas, so recovery mission needs to be done somehow. And the big beast we have, and here I have the total energy of the space station, megatons of TNT. So that is just to, to, to make you aware what objects in space can, can do if they collide with something. The next one shows you the debris avoidance maneuver of a space station. And in last year, 2014, they had to do it five times, the highest number they ever had, to really to avoid collisions. Uh, entries last year, it was about 600 satellites and it was about 100 tons which came down. We didn't notice it, luckily. <laughs> and now a little bit of basic thoughts. If you have only one satellite in orbit, 
everything is fine. If you have two, there is a small probability that they can collide. 